What is up, folks? Today we're at my buddy Matt Leal's front porch here. We're doing something a little unique that you don't see too often. We're doing a lens test semi-hybrid outdoors on the front porch under the awning. So I think this would be more realistic to how most of us shoot. You know, a lot of us are going to be in those situations where you have to deal with the blown out highlights in the background. But also it's going to give us a great way to see how the Sigma FP responds to those blown out highlights, you know, under a porch setting. But this is also really a, a video to look at the new Sigma i-series contemporary lenses. So let's get in here and check these out. Now Sigma has done something really cool with these i-series contemporary lenses. They are all metal. They actually have a splash and dust resistant mount. These are full frame lenses. Look how tiny these things are. Now these are for L mount cameras. So these ones are, I think primarily made to be used for the Sigma FP and FPL cameras. Now what's interesting here, they kind of have two little kits built out. So the first one is like your travel friendly kit. All of these, the 45 F2.8, the 24 f3.5 and the 90 millimeter f2.8. All of these are relatively the same size and that's a pretty good range of lenses right there. 24, 45, 90. Um, they all have matching 55 millimeter filter threads. Now what's cool about the 24, 35 and the 90, 28, they have magnetic caps and that is really cool. And they are protected. The magnet is underneath this nice black felt and it just clips on there. Now the bummer part is this felt, as you can see, it does collect some dirt and uh, debris over time. The also another bummer is for whatever reason, the 4528 is the only i-series contemporary lens that does not have the magnetic cap. Eh, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, I think it's because the 4528 is technically the kit lens, right? Um, but this is a perfect little kit, all matching filter threads. And the 928 is a beautiful, beautiful lens. A 2435, you would think, ah, 35, that's not very fast. But you have to remember, these are full frame lenses. What's cool about this 24F35 is it can close focus up to four inches. So that is insane, a four inch close focusing with a 24 millimeter full frame lens. So that kind of makes up for that slow F 3.5 aperture. Okay, now if you wanted something a little bit faster, they have F2 line of lenses. So that starts with the 35 F2, the 20 millimeter F2, which is actually on the camera right now. So there is the 20 mil F2, the 35 F2, the 65 F2 and the 24 F2. Now this is the awesome line. <laughs> What's cool about these is the 20 F2, the 24 F2 and the 65 F2 all have matching filter threads of 62 millimeters. All three of them have the uh, magnetic cap. The 20 mil F2 is currently on the camera because that's the first one we're gonna start with the lens test today. The one oddball out in terms of filter thread size is the 35 F2. For whatever reason, Sigma chose to give this one a 58 millimeter filter thread. I believe it also has a magnetic cap. However, Sigma didn't uh, send that when they sent these out to me. So the biggest bummer to me about these caps is this was a total missed opportunity to have some cool Sigma engraving on this, right? Like laser engrave. Back in the 70s, Sigma used to have the cool Sigma logo, the Greek letters. That would have been rad to have that on the front, but whatever, it is what it is. Or to take it one step uh, forward, you know, etch in the actual focal length on here. <laughs> Oh well, all right, so all metal build inside and out. They all have a manual focus, autofocus clutch. The biggest bummer, in my opinion, about the autofocus, if you're specifically using these lenses or planning to use them on your FP or FPL cameras for video, the autofocus is unusable, in my opinion. Now for stills, perfect, it works like a charm. Sigma has a way to go in terms of competing with companies like Canon and Sony when it comes to autofocus. So don't count on having autofocus, even with native L mount lenses uh, for video on your FP or FPL. All right, because we are outdoors, folks, we may be experiencing some weird ambient noises. Just keep that in mind while you're watching today's video. We're gonna jump in right away. I have the 20 mil F2 on the Sigma FP. We have our lovely model here, Tracy. We're gonna get into these lens tests right now. All right, so we're in here. We have the newest lens in the iSeries Contemporary line, the 20 millimeter F2. You may have seen this in one of a recent ad in the American Society of Cinematographers publication. This is actually my favorite iSeries Contemporary lens, the 20 mil F2. Really amazing, especially on full frame. It does have pretty heavy vignetting if it's wide open. You may have saw that in one of my previous videos, just that handheld footage out there on the beach. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below, just some real world test footage of these uh, entire series of lenses. Okay, but we're in here, as you'll notice, yeah, this is not your 
best idea of a lens test, right? But again, like I said earlier, we want to kind of see what these do in a more of a real world setting. So yes, we do have ND on the lens. However, this is Firecrest IRND, industry standard, top of the line ND. So it's not going to influence the image much. But also, I think it's important for all of us to keep in mind that you're going to have ND when you're outdoors, especially if you're doing videography, cinematography. So let's keep that in mind, folks. This is going to give you a real world idea of how these lenses and the camera responds to highlights and neutral density filters. All right, that's perfect. All right, so for the first one, we're gonna get right into this. All right, so this is a big no bueno. You'll notice here this heavy, heavy vignetting. The 20 mil F2 actually does not vignette as bad as what that looks like. This is what happens when you use a matte box that was made for Super 35 and you put it on a full frame camera with an ultra wide angle lens like a 20 mil. So that's my own fault. I was using the Bright Tangerine Misfit Atom. Way more vignetting than what I noticed was on the day until I looked at it on my 16 inch MacBook Pro here. So unfortunately, both the 20 mil F2 and the 24 millimeter f2 i had to redo those tests because in my opinion this is unacceptable now the 24 mil f35 was not vignetting as crazy and my theory is that's because the 24 f35 has a much smaller front element like i said earlier it's a 55 millimeter front filter thread versus the 20 and 24 f2s that have a 62 millimeter filter thread so i had to redo the test under my own setup my ugly mug so i apologize for that we're gonna dive in right now look at the 20 f2 and the 24 f2 here at the home studio and then we'll jump back out for the rest of the entire i-series contemporary sigma line back to the front porch test and then i'm gonna go back 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 and now we're going to go back front, and now we're going to go bokeh out. And now while we're bokeh out, I'm going to drop down to a 2.8. There's a 2.8. Now I'm going to drop down to an F4. There's the bokeh at a 4. Going back to a 2.8. There's a 2.8, and now wide open at a 2. Okay, I'm going to go back to... Then right there. Okay, now I'm gonna drop to a 2.8. Okay, there's a 2.8. All right, now I'm gonna rip it back wide open. Now we're back at an F2. Now we're gonna do some distortion here. So that's what it looks like at F22. That's F22 right there. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do the minimum close focus test with the 20 mil now. Okay, this is the 24 millimeter F2. It's on her right now. We're gonna go back focus here. Back, back, back. Okay, now we're gonna come back to the chart. Now we're gonna go straight for bokeh. Here we go, here we go. There's bokeh there. Now I'm gonna drop it down to an F2.8. There's an F2.8. Now I'm gonna go down to an F4. There's an F4. Okay, now we're gonna go back to an F2.8. And then we'll go back to an F2. Okay. We need to see the distortion of F2 wide open here. Okay. We're gonna see the flare up here. We're wide open at an F2. Uh, Let's go down to a 2.8. There we are at a 2.8 there. 
cat. Now we're gonna see what it does all the way down. There's an F-22 there. Wow, look at that. Let's have you look back down towards the camera. Uh-oh. And very nice, very nice. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do, we're checking for distortion when we go this way. Now this one, you'll definitely be able to see the awesome close focusing capabilities of this 24F35. Okay. And here we go, here we go. Okay, and now we're just going to do some bokeh stuff here. Just see how she goes there. We are showing, demonstrating the close focus of the Sigma 24mm f3.5 i-series contemporary lens. That's insane. Almost 4 inches close focus. That's hilarious. Go ahead and look at that dome. We made sure that light was back on 50, right, Matt? Cool. All right, then look back at me. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do a little distortion test here. Dubby, dubby, do, dubby, dubby, do. Oh, this will also really show if there's any rolling shutter on this camera. Okay, ready? And let me do. We'll do bokeh wide open at f2. This is the 35 mil. Here we go, here we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. We'll do one more and then I'll come back to her. There we go, there we go, I'll come back to her. And there she is. Okay, and then um, I'll drop down to a 2.8. We're on a 2.8 now. I'm gonna jump this to 360. Now we'll do the Boca. Now we'll do the Boca. This is one stop down on the 35 F2. And then we're gonna come back to her. And bada boom, bada bing. All right, Matt, let's jump on that big light. Now we're on the 45mm f2.8, we are on rift wide open f2.8, and let's have you take a little peek at that dome there, Tracy. Oh yeah. And look back at me. Oh yeah. And we're gonna do the bokeh here, wide open bokeh. Yeah, this one has ugly bokeh. Coming back, coming back. Back there. Alright, we're gonna do the little distortion test here with the 45. And we're gonna come back this way. And we're coming back this way. Sixty-five F2, very nice. Take a look at that dome for me, Tracy. There we go. And look back at me. Very nice. Okay, F2 wide open on this 65 here. Boca test. Yeah, it's not good, is it? That's okay. 
I've been getting really stingy about fucking... That, that's part of the reason why I've been doing all the lens tests, because that's just where I'm at right now, you know? Like, re researching lenses, so... I've been getting... I've been getting really picky about certain aspects of lenses and stuff. All right, and there we go, there we go. Okay, so let me do a distortion on this. Yeah, she's definitely clipped out. All right, and uh, let me do 2.8 bokeh here. 2.8 bokeh on the 65 mil. Let me go back and just sit here with so you can look and see if there's any sharpness difference there. Yep. There you go, there you go. Hit me good with that too. This is wide open F2 on the 65 here. Go back to her shoulder and then I'm gonna drop it to a 2.8. Here we go, here we go. All right, now hit me again. This is 2.8 on the 65. There we go. And then look at the dome. Very nice, very nice. Take a back look at me. Here we go, and now we'll do the distortion. Here we go, here we go. This is the 90 mil rip wide open at 2A. Not very pleasant bokeh on that, is there? four that's one stop down on this okay now we're at an f4 bokeh test this is the 90 mil f4 and back to her all right cool this is f4 flare test on the 90 mil and hit me Go way over, remember, go past her head when you go back. There you go, yeah, yeah, come back. It's at 100. Go back. And, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. And, yeah, this shot looks really good, actually. The lighting is nice. Okay, that might be the thumbnail right there. All right, as always, thank you all for watching so much. If you're new here, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, especially if you're into camera and lens test reviews or anything to do with lighting, because I do work full time here in LA as both a gaffer and a cinematographer. And uh, if you think, huh, this guy's a little different, that's because I strive to be 100% genuine and honest with everything that I put out here on the YouTube, okay? So I encourage you guys to hit the like button, even if you liked it a little bit, that really Really does help small YouTubers out like myself. Uh, I also need to give a shout out to the Dog Times Patreon. Props to the members of the producers tier over there. That's Mike Skinner and Fred Parr, as well as a big special thanks to all of my newest members for here on the YouTube memberships. That thing is slowly growing as well. One of our top pro members over there, Visit VR. And as always, of course, thank you for watching the video this far in its entirety. I really appreciate that, guys. Every little thing helps out. And uh, props to Sigma for sending out that huge box of their entire iSeries contemporary lenses as well as their FPL camera. Stay tuned because I do have a big video coming up in the future. FP or FPL. I compare both of those cameras, specific things, and then I even threw the Komodo in there for looking at global shutter versus rolling shutters. Uh, lots to look forward to here on the channel, as well as we're going to get away from the Sigma stuff for a while too, and we're going to be looking at other things, some new lights that have been sent my way, some new cool products from Hollyland. So yeah, hit that subscribe button if you are new here. Anyways, thank you all, and uh, for now, that is a wrap.
they're going to be like, hey, man. Yeah, don't call us out, man. <laughs> oh, that, the, I'm, 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 I'm the guy for that, huh, Matt? Oh, yeah. Holds no loyalty to anybody. It's true, though, right? Wouldn't that have been cool? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Like, it's a $700 lens. Come on. Anything besides blank, I would think. Yeah, you know, it's a missed opportunity. So what I was going to do, Matt, while you're um, doing some slow-mo there, let's just get some cool shots of, like, close-ups of me putting that on there. All right, let me 